Hey guys, welcome to episode 5 of the UK Cat series. In today's video, I'll be talking about quantitative reasoning and what you can do to best prepare for this section. In quantitative reasoning, you have 36 questions to complete in 25 minutes. And in 2016, the average score was 690. Quantitative reasoning is trying to test how well you can analyze and evaluate information that's been given to you in a numerical format. Now, how could this be useful when you're a doctor? Well, numbers are very important in medicine. And certainly you need to be very good with numbers to prescribe drugs. Interpreting graphs and reading blood charts also require a good mathematical foundation. So here are my tips to help you prepare. Number one, make sure you practice and improve your mental math skill. Also, make sure to master using the online calculator that's been given to you in the exam. Now when you're preparing your mental maths, make sure you learn all the shortcuts that you can, but also develop speed. Now in the exam, time is very tight, so you need to try and save time wherever possible. However, although you're saving time, you don't want to compromise on accuracy. This may seem obvious, but when you've got a time pressured exam like the UK CAT, that trap is very easy to fall into. In the quantitative reasoning section, you're required to analyse a lot of graph data. Now there's a book called How to Pass Data Interpretation Questions. Now, I'll put a link in the description down below. Now this book was really good, it had loads of graphs and very complicated situations. We had to look in particular for the relevant numerical information and use that in the calculation. Now the calculations were very, very simple. Finding that information can be quite difficult. You need to get better at extracting information from a complicated scenario with speed. You need to be able to read problems quickly and extract the relevant information for you to answer the questions quickly. If you can do this, quantitative reasoning will get really easy for you really quickly. Make sure you learn all the conversions for the basic units, but also that you learn your basic formulas for all shapes, including 3D shapes, and any relevant formulas that you learned at GCC Maths. Now, all of this will be extremely useful. Now most of you will be doing A-level maths, and so you'll be very good at basic mathematical calculations including third manipulation, expanding brackets, and percentages. And a lot of this stuff comes up in the quantitative reasoning section. There is the ISC UK CAT practice book, which has got loads of good questions. But one warning, the questions in that book are designed to be extremely challenging. From my experience, and from many others' experience, the questions are actually much harder in that book than they are in the real exam. This doesn't mean you need to disregard those questions. Those questions are still extremely useful and you'll learn so much from doing them. So make sure to get that book and still do those questions. However, don't expect to do those questions in the short period of time given to you in an exam scenario. You might take a bit longer. It's actually fine to take longer on these questions because the amount you'll learn from mathematics is far greater than the extra 20 seconds you put into working the answer out. And the last tip that I've got is learn from your mistakes. Most of you will make errors for sure. See how you could have got that answer and the method you should have used to get that answer. You expose yourself to all of these techniques and methods whilst practicing and you understand these techniques and methods either the first time around or having made a mistake and then reading through it, you'll be ready for the exam. Quantitative reasoning is a section where most people do well. You too can do well in the section and all it requires is a bit of practice a bit of time where you sit down, work through the ISC book, work through other books and really focus, work out techniques, work out methods and apply those in a way that you can apply them again in the actual example scenario. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a like. If you've got any questions, make sure to comment down below. And lastly, if you haven't yet subscribed, please do subscribe. If you subscribe, you can keep up to date with all my latest videos. So thank you for watching guys, take care and I'll see you in the next video.